Hi guys. Ever wonder how to keep an eye on a property that is 100 feet away? Now, installing IP cameras at such distance can seem daunting, but if you have the right tools or know-how, it is actually easier than you might think. So today in this video, I'm going to show you five different ways to install IP cameras that is beyond 100 meter. Now, please like and subscribe our channel, Fast Cabling, because it's really helped with our YouTube algorithm and help make my life a whole lot easier. Now I'm going to show you the method one, which is using the PoE extender, also as known as the PoE repeater. It enables the PoE power device to be located at a greater distance from the PoE source than what is typically allowed by the PoE standard. It works by receiving the power and data through the Ethernet cable from the PoE source, and then regenerating and transmitting the signal to another Ethernet cable that is connected to the edge device. That's why it allows the device to be located at a greater distance from the PoE source while still receiving the power and data. And there are also many advantages of using the PoE extender. It's easy cabling and quick installation. Since it has a plug and play feature, so there's no need for a con configuration. Only plug and then you can use it. And then it will also provide fast networking. 10 to 100 megabit per second, which will meet the 4K camera stable video stream. And it is compatible with IEEE 802.3 AF, AT, and BT standard, also up to 60 watts of PoE extension. When you add another PoE extender, you can also have up to 1,500 feet continuous transfer. Now, let's do a quick connection together. Now this is the PoE NVR and it's already connected the monitor to have image later after we connect with the camera. Now I'm going to use the Ethernet cable to connect with the PoE NVR. This is a 100 meter Ethernet cable and I'm using this to, to connect with the PoE extender. Make sure you plug it into the right port. This is A, the input port, and we are going to connect the input port with the PoE NVR. And then using the output port, which is B, to connect with the Ethernet cable that's connecting to the edge device. Now I took out the neck and the gland for quick installation. And here we have another 100 meter Ethernet cable. And I'm going to connect it with the IP camera. And the IP camera needs a little bit of time. The indicated light is on, so we should have image soon. You can see this is a live video and it's working. Now I'm going to show you method two, which is using the long range PoE switch. This is a device that combines the functionality of a traditional PoE switch with the ability of transmitting the power and data over a single ethernet cable for extended distance. So there's no external power source needed in between. It has maximum of 500 meter distance between the switch and the edge device. It can provide fast speed. The connected PD can receive about 100 megabit per second. Also, it is compatible with IEEE 802.3 AF, AT, and BT standard. And for each port, it can supply up to 30 watts of power. And this one has four ports available, and this device has eight ports. It also has stable PoE cable run and requires only a single Ethernet cable. So we can offer improved stability and flexibility. Now let's do the connection and here are what we need. This is the PoE, long range PoE switch and it's already powered up. I'm going to use the Ethernet cable to connect with the long range PoE switch. And you can see 
it is already connected to the NVR and to the monitors to have image later. Since I don't have an Ethernet cable that is 500 meters, so I had need to add up the Ethernet cable using the coupler. This is just a simple coupler to connect both Ethernet to cable together to reach 500 meter. And then on this side, we have to add a PoE extender. Now we know that the long range PoE switch can provide power and data, but this is just an ordinary IP cameras, so it don't have the ability to send back the signal. That's why we need to add the PoE extender in order for it to send back the signal. And connect with the IP camera. And you can put the extender as close as you can with the IP camera. And the lights are on. And the image should come up shortly. Let's give it a minute. Here we go. And this is a live video. You can see it. So we're done with the second method. So here comes method number three. For method three, we are going to use the PoE power switch, aka the PoE pass-through switch. Now, this switch can receive power from the PoE injector or the PoE switch and then use that power to provide power to the edge devices like the IP cameras or wireless access point. So you can eliminate the need for separate power source and simplify the installation. The PoE power switch can double the maximum distance between the PSE and PT from 100 meter up to 200 meter. So you can extend your gigabyte network connectivity. Since this is a one cable ex network expansion, so only you need one single cable between the main network and the PoE power switch and provide both power and data to up to seven devices. It has eight port in total, but number eight port is the input port. So we have seven ports available. Now the total power budget is about 72 watts. And for each port, it can provide up to 30 watts of power. And since this is an outdoor PoE power switch, the enclosure is IP67 waterproof. It can work under harsh environment. And with the heat dissipation design, not only it can prevent water, it can also prevent moisture, so nothing can crash the cable line. So let's do the connection together, and those are what we need. Remember, our PoE power switch can provide up to seven devices and is using BT standard. So the AT standard PoE switch or injector may not have enough power. That's why I'm using the 90 watt PoE injector. Now let's do the connection. The router is already connected to the NVR and the monitor. Now I'm going to use the PoE injector. We have the data input port and the PoE output port. I'm going to use a short patch cord to connect the data input with the router to get data. And then for PoE output port, I'm going to use the Ethernet cable to plug it in so I can connect it to the outdoor PoE power switch. Now this is a 100 meter Ethernet cable and let's open it. Remember I said that only port A is the input port, so let's plug it in port number 8, which is this one. Now normally you have to go through here to have IP67 waterproof, but I'm just plugging it right away for faster installation. And now I'm going to use another Ethernet cable to connect the PoE power switch. This is the IP camera. Let's connect it with the Ethernet cable. And you can see the indicated lights are on. So we should be getting image pretty soon. Let's give it a minute. It should come up really quickly. Here we go. And this is a live video and the whole setup is done. 
So now I'm doing method four. For method four, I'm using the fiber ethernet media conversion kit with 300 meter pre-made fiber optic cable. Fiber optic cable are made out of glass. It uses light paths to travel, so it can carry information over a long distance and are capable of transmitting a large amount of data at an incredibly high speed. Also, it has point-to-point -point fiber optic link. It can link up to 20 kilometers between point A and point B and it can serve 1000 megabit per second bandwidth, which is a fast network speed and also ensure it has stable data transmission. Let's take a look at what we have in the kit. This is the media converter. Since some of the devices are still using electrical signal, that's why we need the media converter to convert the electrical signal into fiber optical signal. And then we have the SFP transceiver. We plug this into the media converter. But usually it is separately because this is where you connect it with the fiber optic cable. And it has to determine what kind of fiber optic cable you use because we have single mode and multi mode and also different kind of distance. Now, those are what included in the kit. Now let's do the connection together. So here's the whole setup. Now I'm using the 100 meter fiber optic cable to connect. I already connect the router with the NVR and the monitor. And now I'm going to use a short patch cord to connect the router with the media converter for data. So this is the media converter. It has this side. Let's plug it in. And also it requires a power source. So I'm going to plug in the power supply. And now for the SF transceiver I'm going to insert on the other side so it can convert the electrical power signal into fiber optical signal. This is a pre-made fiber optic cable using the LC connector and it has two string. Now I'm using string A. This is pre-made it so it's 100% tested in the factory. Now this side is done. Now let's go over to the other side. Also remember to use the string A to connect with the SFP transceiver. Let's plug it in here and then insert to our media converter. And it's the same connection. We use the short patch cord to connect with our camera and then insert the power. And for the camera, since it doesn't have a PoE, so we need power source for the camera. Let me plug it in. Now, the whole setup is done. The camera should have image shortly. Let's make sure you plug everything tight and it's connected. And let's see. Here we go. And this is a live video. This is a 100 meter fiber optic cable. We also have 300 meter and 500 meters. So finally, it comes down to method number five. For method five, we're using the wireless bridge. It is a device to connect two or more local area network over a wireless connection, allowing the device on one network to communicate with the other network. It works by receiving the wireless signal from network one network and transmitting the signal to another network so they can effectively bridging the two networks together. The wireless bridge offers plug and play feature. So you can match the wavelength of each bridge easily by pressing a single button. So there's no complicated configuration required on your phone or the web. It also supports maximum of 900 megabit per second transmission data rate. So you can set up a wireless connection within 3 km transmission range with no obstacles between. You can also choose from using the optional DC 24 volt passive PoE power or the DC 12 volt power. It has IP65 waterproof, so it can work perfectly outdoor. The point-to-point -point wireless LAN can build in a high-speed point-to-point wireless connection to provide network for the devices. So without saying, let's do the connection together. 
So now we are doing the wireless bridge connection and those are what we need. I already connect the router with the NVR and the monitor. And I'm going to use the short patch cord to connect with our wireless bridge now. Let's connect it with the router. And then over this side, we have two ports here so you can supply up to two devices. So I'm just plug it in to one of the port. And I'm using the DC 12 volt power today. And here we have an M and S button, stands for master and slave. Make sure you pair them up, one master and one slave. So this is the master side. And you see the reset button here? This is the button we set the configuration. Now, this is the signal bar. The many signal you get, the better signal you have. And then we can see we have number one here. And we are going to press the reset button to change this channel let's see maybe it'll, okay now it changed to channel number two and we have to match the other bridge to channel number two also so this side is all done now let's move on to the other side so for this side we are going to do the same thing first let me power up my wireless bridge and then you can see i already put it on the slave mode. And then using another short patch cord to connect with the camera. And the camera doesn't have power source, so we have to plug it in. And then let's turn over here, also the signal bar, and then the configuration. This is number one now. I'm going to press the button and set it to number two. Now the whole setup is done. The image should come up shortly. So remember to put your wireless bridge on a line of sight and facing each other. The image should come up shortly. So let's give it some time. Here we go, and this is a live video, and the whole setup is done. So we have connected the IP cameras using five different ways, and you can choose the best method to suit your situation. Depends on the bandwidth, distance, and the environment. And actually, for each method, there are a variety of models you can choose from. If you have any question or you want to know more about how to set up a long range network system, feel free to contact us through the link down in the description box below or just simply leave a comment. Thank you so much for watching today. I will see you next time.